four o'clock, so let's call our meeting in order. Harry, can you do the roll? Sure. Mr. Eberl? Here. Mr. Schneider? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Kappa? Here. And Mr. Borgman? Myself? Here. Um, Alder Person Witzel and uh, Fishers are both here. And staff? Thanks, sir. Nick, was the meeting appropriately noticed? Uh, yes, the meeting was noticed. Uh, it was posted here at the office. It was also sent to City Hall in the library for posting. In addition, it was sent to various media outlets. Public comment period at this time. The commission would recognize members of the public. Good evening. Sorry to speak. Seeing none. Seeing none. Commissioner, council, and staff comments. Commissioners, anything before we get going? Council members, any comments? Nothing from <laughs> staff comments. No staff comments. Service awards. Uh, yes, so tonight, uh, Jamie Weiler celebrated five years of service in the fire department back on June 30th. So, <coughs> Jamie is a uh, water system operations specialist. Very good, thank you. PFAS and lead update. So I'm going to kick this off and then I'm going to turn it over to John. Um, his first uh, lead services, uh, as of the end of June, we've replaced 136 so far, so we're well on the way of being the PS, excuse me, the DNR targets, and uh, we'll keep going as long as the uh, construction season allows us to. And then as far as PFOS, I'll let John kind of jump on um, We, you know, back when we originally tested, we call it tested positive for DTAC or PFOS, I immediately reached out to three national engineering firms that have Wisconsin ties. Uh, those firms were CDM Smith, SEH, and Baxter Woodman, and uh, asked them for feasibility study proposals for helping us get through this, this next step of determining what's our best course of action. Is it to take the facilities that we have and put some sort of treatment procedure there to remove the PFAS? Or is it better to go search for new blue water resources, new wells, and other locations and um, put transmission made to get into the existing treatment plan to a better idea? Um, those, call, those proposals were submitted last week, Wednesday. Nick and I have reviewed them. They're all pretty similar to each other. Uh, SEH was the, the low bidder at uh, 24850 and their project manager lead on that this proposal has considerable experience with our our utility and our our facilities he was the lead designer when we built the, the treatment facility back in 1992 and he was also the project manager when we did the upper booster rebuild and the south side booster rebuild and so he'll be heavily involved in this project as well so we are bringing those that proposal for your approval today to get move forward on the PFAS update or PFAS issue. With that, SCH is also currently working with Rib Mountain on what's called a temporary removal system. There is a company called Water Surplus that has a treatment facility in a semi-trailer that they can just bring in and, and, and uh, put it on site. Of course, it would cost us some piping to get it from the transmission main underground up into the semi-trailer. And probably a, a, and probably be a good idea, too, to park it on. Um, with the investment on our part, it will mostly be to pay for that, the semi-trailer and the, the iron exchange resin that, that comes with it. So we'll be looking into those options as part of this process as well. Any uh, questions? I'll just add a few other points, I guess, like, as John mentioned, this is really the first step. So we can identify what you know, the options that are out there and which option makes the most sense long term. And once that's decided, then we can actually go into the next phase, which would be the designing, engineering, bidding, and so forth. So this first phase, this first request really is just for that first phase to get the idea of which solution is the best long term solution. And we'll have additional requests on the road once it gets engineering and then all the pieces. As John mentioned, I think uh, the Red Mountains design, um, you know, they've built a concrete pad and brought their pipes up into this temporary trailer with the hopes that that'll be the permanent solution. They'll take the trailer off and build a you know, permanent structure. And if that's the route, they may end up going on might be a solution that we select as well. Um, just 
and there's a number of options that we have looked at today are not the list that you're seeing the best list on the chart. Um, the other piece is just it's uh, normally when it comes to service level engagements with consultants, it's something that you know, we get as a group um, provide a budget and you approve a budget and sometimes the services are, are included in that. Um, other times they're capital projects, but the services are part of that and the job will come forth and you know, approve that. Um, so that's why this one is coming forward because it wasn't considered in any of the previous trial version or, or budget. Um, what will happen is these dollars will go into a holding account, if you will, and once we get to the actual capital improvement, then these dollars will be associated with that capital improvement down the road. Questions? questions? And you're recommending an additional amount of uh, cushion? Oh, uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, our experience with these types of projects is you get into them and you start, while we've defined a scope, sometimes you get scope creep where you decide to go maybe a slightly different direction. And just due to the sensitivity of this project, we felt it's imperative that it keeps going. So instead of us getting close to the end, being short, if you will, and having to go over, having to come back to this body and we're going to lay the project for weeks, if you will, ask to have that little bit of a cushion there just to allow us some flexibility for the situation presented itself. On a positive note, we are currently meeting our daily demand without any issues with the current water that we do have. So as far as actual use, we are very good. <coughs> the issue can be in, there is a code statement that says, the DNR says you have to have what's called firm capacity. And that's when you take your best well out of service, and then you can only run the rest of your wells at 18 of the 24 hours a day and still meet your peak daily demand. Currently, we do not do that, but there's some gray area there. Our peak daily demand was a couple of years ago when we had that construction failure on Highway, or on highway 29th Street, when that water main fell into the sanitary trench and, and busted, so we had basically two 12-inch dead-end pipes going full bore. We shouldn't have an issue like that in theory ever again, you think. You know, that's a once in a lifetime kind of event. Um, and technically speaking, those wells are still in the rotation that if we would ever have a fire, the DNR has given us permission to use that rather than drain the system. We could do that, use it. Then we would just have to do a public notice to say, hey, we had to use this water due to such and such an event. So technically speaking, we do have some gray area wiggle room that we are meeting our firm capacity because we could use those wells if we absolutely had to. So help me out. There's a lot of potential on PFOS. Uh, have, have the feds in the state agreed on what the limits are now? And last I heard, this was kind of still in the works, and we know it's coming, and we know it's not good, but yeah. but we're working with this really gray area yes. of what it is we're trying to meet. So I there is no how this all fits in. actual limit at the moment. In a few weeks, the DNR will pass you know, officially go into the 70 parts per trillion total, and we are under that number. Where it comes in is that they also reference the Department of Health, Health and Safety's health index of 1.0. And that's defined as what you have for PFOS uh, parts per trillion divided what the recommended level is for that particular PFOS element. And you divide that together, then you add up each of your individual elements. And if you have one element that's over the recommended level for that element, and then you have any other detect, you're going to be over one. So if you're at, like, say, 21 parts per trillion for one, and their limit is 20, you're going to be at 1.1, right? And then any detect over that is going to add to that number, no matter how minuscule that is. So you're always going to be over one if you have one positive connection, even though you could be under the 70 total. So as long as they keep referencing that number, they're going to be able to get the public in an uproar because they're, you're over that Department of Health and Safety's number. The public, as a general rule, doesn't understand the difference between a legal limit and a health advisory. 
So we are meeting all the legal limits, even if we would use the water, but we are over the health advisory. And while I was away at the conference in June, the EPA came out with their recommended health advisory, and they are now talking in parts per quadrillion. So just to add on to that, no regulation currently. No. In our, we're expecting in the next month, we'll come up at 70 parts per trillion, which we are meeting now. And we are expecting the EPA to come up sometime later this year with some initial and then final stuff for the fall. As far as it relates to this project and this uh, service uh, engineering study, um, we had some initial discussions with uh, SEH about how their approach would be, and they said just start with zero. And basically, you're going to cleanse the water, if you will, of all PFOS, and use that as the method at, at this point until we hear that you know, the regulations change or, or provide some, kind of, um, some flexibility. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? John, did you say that that trailer would filter it out, the PFAS? Yes, they, they use, this particular company uses an ion exchange resin, and I have given them all our test results that we have had so far. And so they've kind of designed a temporary system that would supply us with enough resin to get us through about 1.2 billion gallons of pumping, which if we would use Southside at the rate we were using it prior to this event, would last us about two and a half to two and three quarter years. So it would, one trailer with one load of consumables, if they meet what they say it can meet, should get us through a, the study phase, design and construction phase of a, of a full time facility. Long term, that's not viable though, doing that continually? You have to, you could do that continually, I suppose. It's somewhat of a, a new thing, so I don't know that the DNR would let you do it continually. But in theory, yeah, if you just swap out a, a new semi-trailer every, you know, 1.2 billion gallons, give or take, you you could do that. Yes. Maybe the temporary structure you want some rest of permit structure that we need from that perspective. Yeah, my guess is the DNR wouldn't let you get away with the, the temporary facility. They want something more permanent, set up more weather resistant type of thing. Yeah. <coughs> As for iron and manganese, to look at those as well in this country. So if they help with some of those areas, um, to moving of those uh, items from the water as well. Okay. For moving the iron and manganese help both be fostered. Well, they, they need to be separate because they kind of interfere with each other. So like if for Wildwood, Wildwood has a little bit of a manganese issue where it doesn't, it's, it doesn't uh, exceed any health advisory or any legal standards, but that could foul the either granular activated carbon if they choose to go that way or the ion exchange resin, and then that wouldn't be as productive as it should be. So you may want to remove that manganese first and then send it through the, the ion exchange or carbon product, whichever one ends up being the, the better way for removals. Sounds like reverse osmosis almost. Well, they, well that is an option as well. We will be looking at that. In the industry-wide so far, they have frowned upon doing that from the standpoint of what that does is it takes a very low concentrated item and puts it into a very high concentrated liquid form. And that can be hard to transfer completely safely without having any spillage or anything, you know, doing transfer and whatnot. Whereas if you do it with the ion exchange and the and the carbon, it tends to be more solid form, which is easier to contain. So people in the industry have kind of shied away from the RO, but it, it can be done. It is one of the methods of alternative or alternative methods that people look into. Okay. And just for reference, what does a new well cost? Is it millions or hundreds of thousands? It's hundreds of thousands, but it's hard for me to predict because our last well went in, and it was either 2013 or 2014, so almost a decade ago. So it's hard to compare dollars for dollars at this point, but they will give us some cost estimates as part of looking into what a new well would cost. Um, a new well is it going to be an alternative to look into, but is also a risk alternative there because what if you drill a well and it's it's got detection as well, <laughs> right? So you know that that will be taken into consideration. Um, you know we have we have some well sites near other wells that were tested and didn't have any detects. 
Um, but if you work on that new EPA um, method, you know, where they target, target parts per quadrillion, that risk gets even greater. You know, that's another factor of a thousand. So I, I, it'll be looked into, but my gut feeling is that will be the lowest alternative just because of the possibility of risk involved. We're still needing treatment down the line. The variable cost, I say variable uh, cost, and you want to put it to wells as close as the transmission rate if you're relatively close, and that's, that's an inexpensive cost. Whereas if you're a couple miles away and it's a plenty of transmission rate, you can see how the cost can go up quite a bit. The, that makes sense. Yeah. And what is the size of transmission main you're connecting to? If you're, the transmission main you have is, say, a six inch and designed for a thousand gallons a minute, and you're going to search for another thousand gallons a minute to make up for what we just kind of lost, so to speak, that should, in theory, double the transmission main size. You might not be able to handle it, so you'd have to upgrade the transmission main all the way forward until you got to a size where it could handle that extra thousand gallons a minute. I gotcha. That'd be pretty expensive. Could be. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions? Is there anybody who'd like to make a motion? Sure. What would you like a motion? <laughs> that yeah. we approve the use of SEH to do the studies as des as described at the $24,850 price tag with the 25% uh, override. Up to a 25%. Up to a 25% override. I'll second. Motion. Second by John. Other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Economic Development Board quarterly update. All right. Uh, Economic Development Board met on July 7th. It was our first meeting uh, since March with just the EDB, so it had been a few months. Josh's position is being recruited for uh, at the Development Services Director position. There have been a couple of candidates, but nothing has, has worked out. Uh, they are using a recruiter for it, so, you know, hopefully, but uh, nothing that it sounded like was imminently on the horizon, so. Um, the Main Street Facade Program, uh, the EDB did approve funding to cover three projects in 2022, um, and so those should start moving forward, I would assume, pretty quickly. <coughs> Daniel's addition, that's the 23, uh, lots in that addition. 12 lots have closed, so a little over half, and they're in various stages of construction on those lots. Two lots are in, additionally are in the process of closing, so so far that gives 14 out of 23 in the first year uh, that are in process one way or another. And just as a reminder, the funds from the sale of the lots do go straight back to the EDB, um, our fund, as the EDB did provide the 900000 in additional funding uh, for the purchase itself. New subdivision uh, in the works out by 21st Street and Washington Avenue, and infrastructure bids on that are due July 13th. Uh, it'll be a little while then before it moves forward, but uh, we're getting there just like we did with Daniels. Acquisition of land from UW, which was the former ag farm, has been completed and the city now owns about 123 acres, which is earmarked for industrial use. So, both heavy light industrial use. The West uh, 2nd Street redevelopment, the CDA and the council both uh, approved a general plan, and the CDA now has to give a final review and final approval, which we expect to come the end of July, or they're meeting at the, near the end of July. It's still in the early stages. There's a great deal of work to do, and it'll be a while before results are seen, but there is impetus to move forward with that redevelopment of that area. And then lastly, next month, uh, ADB uh, will be looking at the 2023 budget. Anything else? Adam or? Questions for Paul? Last week, with uh, an issue last week with, uh, as you remember, proof rolls. 
they do testing where they uh, determine the stability of the soil. And they're, they're doing the proof roll, which would essentially be the, uh, where the floor of the garage would be. And of course, I did not pass. It was unstable. So they um, are working on uh, options right now to basically stabilize it, which will likely mean excavating of some of the dirt over two feet of it, install breaker on the fabric. It is a sizable change order. Um, however, it, uh, we're still within our contingency to get out of that area, so we're still doing okay as far as our overall budget. But it was a, uh, one thing that was, let's say, planned for unplanned. But uh, anytime we went into the project, they talked about any of the subsurface work is obviously the uh, wild card and summer card is not knowing exactly how stable that area would be. Um, we actually had two engineering firms come in after the first one gave their opinion to get a second opinion just given the magnitude of the cost that'll be associated with this change. And then we did also the other way to uh, not doing, just going ahead with the original design. And uh, unfortunately, then there's no warranty in the installation, and the engineering firm in the that can do is getting heating and the concrete, which obviously would uh, cause additional issues. So it's best to uh, take care of it now and go So that's going on. Uh, it will have a slight impact on the overall schedule, but we're still shooting for sometime in November the completion of, of, of all, the, all the work. So we're still looking, well, looking good there. Um, and then we brought a, a brief recap on the activity in June as far as customers coming into the office for uh, into the lobby. Um, as you can see, uh, some have made payments, uh, and others are coming in with other questions as far as starting and stop service. Questions for Nick? Commission KPI. This came up uh, originally two months ago, and we decided to defer it and use uh, the conferences this summer as uh, research opportunities. Um, I know at the uh, national conference, Harry and John and I attended a couple of sessions that talked about the commission uh, doing commission KPIs, and we came away with a bunch of ideas. Um, I think uh, we can have discussion here or. I would propose that the, the course of action be to form a subcommittee to work on it and then bring it back. So if there were two people who wanted to pursue that um, as a subcommittee. You did mention this to me that you might propose this, and I did reach out to legal. I don't want to detract from going this route, but just so we're aware that a subcommittee operates the same as this body is. So we would post agendas, we would take minutes, yeah. all that, and that's why we follow the same track. That uh, an alternative is uh, um, for you to uh, you know, direct staff to bring back uh, a list of indexes if that suits you, and then you can play on and just discuss that here. But uh, I'm totally open to whatever else the commission would like to go. Thoughts? I, I like the idea of staff working on this rather than the subcommittee. We can always find the subcommittee later. Okay. Um, the reason being we're getting so much information now, uh, and KPIs at one time I thought uh, really were not necessary for us going to the conference and hearing some of those ideas, I changed my mind. But now I'm wavering again, uh, looking at all the information that we we'll get, uh, KPIs, uh, I'm not so sure. I, I'd like staff to bring, to bring some ideas forward to see if it's something that's suitable for us. Other thoughts? Thanks, sir. I would have to say I'd agree a little bit as well with Harry. Uh, with the, what I got from the conference is there's a lot of ways to attack uh, KPIs. You can have too many of them, too few. And I didn't get a good solid feel for them within the, in our utility, but I think there's a, there's a place for them. I'm just not sure how much time the staff would want to spend on them or, or I have a lot of more questions than answers. 
Remember two months ago, this started with Nick coming to us and saying this is a really broad topic and I could really use you guys to drill it down a little bit before we get to work on it. So if all we do is kick it back to him without further direction, we've just gone in a big circle. And maybe just to add to that, I mean, if you kick it back to us, that's fine. But what I'm going to present to you next month will be a laundry list that will be pretty extensive without any, if you give me some full poster or uh, some parameters, then I can grab it too and slim that down before it comes to you. Otherwise, you're going to get a uh, list of probably three or four more now. The one, the one takeaway I got from the conference was where they used KPIs was in marketing, and that was a much bigger utility, but they used KPIs in that regard. That's, that's about all I got from them. And KPIs are all measurable, uh, measurable things, um, and we're doing a lot of that now um, with our quarterly updates on the, on the budget and, and uh, you know, yeah, that would be my, you know, my, one of the thoughts I have is that we already have KPIs. We probably have too many of them. We just start calling them that. We get a lot of information. We a lot of information. KPIs. And what makes them key? Key to who? So the, you know, the piece I took away from one of the sessions that I attended <coughs> talked about using the KPIs to close the accountability loop again what you expect from your manager, what you expect from the utilities for the long <coughs> and to sit down and really look at what we've set for the utilities performance on financial and, and to use that as the basis of the KPI. So we're not talking much more than maybe ten things. I would hope not. But getting close but getting really clear on what those are and what that standard is. And while I feel like we collect a lot of information and we get a lot of information shared, have we ever really put the standard with it? I like having fewer things to look at, although you can't ignore those other things either. But, uh, you know, I agree with you, Mike. I think that would be great. We could, you might start with 200, but let's, the goal has to be to get it down to 10 or less or some, some very finite number, or they're just like we have now. And they just become other measures. At least yeah. that's been my experience. We've been throwing around the, the term KPI, but there may be people who aren't aware of it. Maybe our audience, uh, it's key performance indicator is, is what KPIs are. And uh, they have to be measurable. Uh, so consensus throw it back at staff? Is that we've got two? You're, you're I, I think so. I think that, staff. Yeah. I'd like to see the list, if nothing else. I mean, that might be overwhelming, but it's it's good to see that, and maybe you can help. We can help winnow out to sure get it down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know they would. Yeah. Well, I did some research on it yesterday, and there's an awful lot of oh, yeah. there on the internet. Then, yeah. you know, and there's stuff on. There. So. It sounds like we're going to ask you to come back with some ideas there. Yeah, that's no, no problem. I think you know, as, as you think about KPIs, especially outside of this setting, you know, I think one of the things that I thought about is you know, when I look at the value, you know, having a range, understanding you know, this is a red, yellow, green, as far as that range, but then well, that's great. That, that shows us one level of what we're just to look at, but then what's the action? And is it uh, the expectation that the commission is going to be taking action at some level? Is it something I'm supposed to be taking or our staff? I think you want to you know, two or three steps down the road as you can have the KPIs, how, how the reaction will be, is there a process that's to be defined in your policy that defines how who's responsible for what aspects of each of them. So it sounds like a, another one of those items that'll be on the agenda for a while. Yes. <laughs> I think so. Any other thoughts on that topic? <clears throat> Were you hoping to be on that committee? I was willing to be or not be. Could do both. We could do hybrid. I wouldn't want to make a big deal out of it, but I'd meet with you just to see if we can come up with some ideas and maybe that and staff lists. You can. I just have to post that. Okay. And if you have any minutes and agendas and stuff, so we just have to make sure it follows the same formality of those meeting lists. Okay. And then to make these KPIs, is that internal or is that contracted out or how are they made? Um, well, 
all of the above. Okay. So it depends on once we start looking at the list. I mean, I think that's one thing that we'll have to look at is you know, some of them are our values that are you know, the system kind of puts them on every month. They're already there, but there's others that are where we have to go through a long calculation and we may have to balance staff time or you know, third party developers to figure out ways to, to make it more early. I think at this point, it's my biggest concern is additional staff time to put together something and to follow it through every month. Uh, I'm really concerned about that. Yeah. Just to throw it out there, I don't know that KPIs have to be monthly. You could be could looking be at it like quarterly or annual. Sure. And depending on what we what we want to include in that accountability group, some of it may be information we're already getting now, so it may be a reformatting process more than a whole set of new statistics. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, I think one that pops in my head is like how the statistics and index. I mean, we'll be using those as a, we could provide those annually to you. Maybe there is, there is parameters that are on that as far as what value. This is down the road, but the opposite side of that is, is once you've identified your KPIs, it's good to look at the other information you're getting and ask yourself the question, do we need to keep getting it? Yes. So you may remember back in March we uh, discussed both the banking and the audit RFPs and uh, now that we have the banking one uh, completed and behind us we're moving down with the audit one. Um, Ken and I met the city staff recently to start that process and uh, I want to bring this back to you for you guys to review and discuss if there's anything that you'd like to uh, have us incorporate into the banking process. Um, 
this is slightly higher than what was budgeted. Budgeted was $113,050. Uh, we didn't incorporate $40,000 in unanticipated in the budget. So we are covered from a budget perspective uh, for the dollars. Um, this is a, a project that we are trying to do later this year. I think the biggest um, variable is the disposal cost. While it's included in here, that can go up and down and there are grants that we're trying to work with to uh, with the DNR and I'm here with the uh, uh, fire department to see if we can take advantage of some of those and reduce some of those costs. With the actual, if I remember right, the actual construction cost is around 86,000 is for the new system, 53 of it is for the demo and disposal. Is there a motion to approve the job orders? I'll make the motion to approve the job orders. Uh, 7420. I'll second. Second by Paul. Questions or discussion? I know it's not completely germane to this, but are there other places in Marshfield that have this kind of problem that we're aware of? Uh, yes. Um, so when, again, back when we built the plants, what we did is we purchased two foam trailers that we were um, that we gifted to the fire department to use to help with any type of fire department type fire. Basically, the foam takes away the oxygen of the fire. So the main purpose initially is for the plant and if the tanks were ever to come on fire, but also gives a luxury to the city if they were having an accident with the railroad. They bring to the town or an automobile accident where there was a fire, they would be able to use the foam as well. And I know that the uh, chief buddy is, is uh, looking at that right now and trying to look at alternatives to uh, move that foam. I believe they also have smaller, uh, forgive me if they're one or five gallon buckets as well that they have in the trucks. And they're trying to get those as well as they are in the place. So it's possible they may, uh, they may come to join us at a meeting in the future. Interesting things. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Bills of payroll? Bills have been reviewed and certified proper for payment. Thank you, Kent. Is there a motion to approve the bills of payroll? So moved. Second. Second by Nate. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Previous meeting minutes you should have from the June 20th meeting in front of you. Is there a motion to approve those? <coughs> I so move. By John. Second. Second by Nate. Any corrections proposed? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Back to you for financial reports, Ken. The included in the financial reports are the June uh, cash reports and the main financial statements. Are there any questions on either of those? Anybody have questions for financial statements? Approve the go to close session for Wisconsin State Statute 19.85. Deliberating and negotiating the purchase of public property. That's the public funds that conducting under specified public business. How did ever bargain the reasons require a closed session for the purpose of discussing how our supply of water office facility? We decided to do that. Roll call for that. So, here, would you please take the roll call vote? Sure. Uh, Mr. Kepler? Yes. Mr. Schneider? Yes. Uh, Mr. You. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Borkman? Uh, yes. And Mr. Eberl? Yes. Uh, we are in full session. We'll take two minutes.